Hello everyone, for anyone that does not know, I am Kawase Jinkeru. I am making this video mainly to talk about why I enjoy streaming and or speedrunning in general. I don't have any bullet points or anything written down that would tell me, that would help me um, to point out exactly what it is I'm trying to talk. So I did ask everyone on my Discord some general ideas of what questions they could possibly ask me. They gave me some questions. I'm going to give them some answers and uh, possibly give a backstory of um, of said questions, assuming um, I don't. I don't know derail from the question in itself uh, again uh, I will be talking about why I enjoy streaming speedrunning uh, possibly why do I get salty while doing either of the two uh, so again for anyone that does not know I mainly do Super Mario Maker on my stream as well as speedrunning in the weekends I used to do Perlers, I haven't had the time to do them for quite some time now, but I do dabble in creative, if that's what you want to call it when it comes to the uh, Twitch archive. But obviously with Mario Maker 2 coming out soon, uh, I'll be switching over to mainly Mario Maker 2 and speedrunning on the side whenever I just don't want to mess around with that. Um, but anyways, um, I'll just go on and see what people have to say so this question comes from a link of time so anyone that does not know he is my brother my older brother so he asks what is your all-time favorite game if you don't want to limit it to one what is your favorite game by system okay so I would Easily have been able to answer that question a long time ago before um, I even knew what Steam was by simply answering with uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 or Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. Uh, but nowadays, that's just extremely hard to answer, really. So I'm gonna just try and see if I can even think of the games that I definitely enjoy or at least describe them. So. For the NES, definitely my favorite game for the NES is Super Mario Bros. 3. Um, if you were to ask me which version of the game I would actually enjoy playing most, uh, it would actually be the Super Mario All-Stars version for the Super Nintendo, which has Mario Bros. 1, Mario Bros. 2, Mario Bros. Uh, Lost Levels, which is technically Mario Bros. 2 in Japan, and Mario Bros. 3 as well as Super Mario World if you bought the version that includes Super Mario World. But anyways, the reason why I actually enjoy that is because it has updated graphics. It just looks a lot prettier. It sounds a whole lot better. And I do, I have done speed runs of Super Mario World and Mario Bros. 3. And usually whenever I do those, I mainly stick with the All-Stars just because... When it comes to streaming, it just, again, it just looks a lot better. So I actually enjoy speedrunning Mario Bros. 3 in general um, in the All-Stars version for that very reason. Uh, for the SNES, um, again, it would be Super Mario World, Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana. Um... Mainly those three, just because I, I have uh, great memories off of those. No, no other real reason, other than, you know, um, the soundtrack for all three of those games are amazing. Uh, for the Game Boy, I don't really think I have any favorite games for the Game Boy besides Tetris. Obviously, um, that's where I found, I guess you can say the love that I have for Tetris. I enjoy playing a good old Tetris game here and there whenever I get the chance, assuming I do. But obviously with Tetris 99, I can get that chance whenever I want for the Nintendo Switch, which is pretty cool, especially since you 
end up playing against others, which is not naturally something I would enjoy doing. But considering the fact that you just don't know who those are or um, they can't just specifically attack you, you know, it's pretty cool. But yeah, no other... I wouldn't be able to think of any other game besides Tetris. I actually ended up forgetting uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 for the SNES. That game's obviously just amazing. N64. For the N64, believe it or not, one of my favorite games for the N64 would be um, Earthworm Jim. I'm not sure what it's called. I'm not sure if it's Earthworm Jim 3D or Earthworm Jim 64. I want to say it's 3D, but... I honestly don't know what it's called. It's just the Earthworm Jim game for the N64. Uh, that game is just... I don't know. It's just so wacky. Definitely in the 90s, they ended up... Um, uh, showing some episodes of Earthworm Jim. Man, those were pretty messed up. Uh, that entire game is... Even though I say it's messed up, it's, it's just extremely interesting you, you guys should definitely check out any of the earthworm gym games for the super nintendo they released two of them i believe as well as the one for n64 and then they just have not released any more after that i have no idea why i want to say the earthworm gym for the n64 didn't really sell all that well so they just stopped making them i have no idea i definitely plan on speedrunning that game one day but i honestly don't know when um, so besides that, it would obviously also be, um, Super Mario 64 and, uh, Ocarina of Time, obviously. Um, uh, moving on to the GameCube. The GameCube, definitely one of my favorite games would be Luigi's Mansion and uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Um... I definitely love those two games. I know, I remember, I was so obsessed with Wind Waker, uh, just because at those times, it was a lot harder to get news from games before they were released, and at that time, uh, the internet finally started thriving, or at least it did for me, and um, just being able to see pictures, gameplay, stuff like that was really amazing back when uh, again when the GameCube uh, first started um, before it was even released so seeing anything when it came to Wind Waker was just amazing I also remember the hate that people had for both Luigi's Mansion and Wind Waker mainly because Wind Waker looked like a kids game I was like I don't know about you guys man but this game looks amazing and whenever and when I actually got my hands to playing both of those games especially since Growing up, we got Luigi's Mansion first and then Wind Waker. Oof, those times were definitely the best times. Um, I kind of definitely wish that I was still living in a time back then where I just didn't really have to worry about anything. So I just, you know, came back from school and started playing uh, some Luigi's Mansion and Wind Waker for as long as I really wanted to. Uh, it was definitely amazing. Obviously, there's other titles, but those two are definitely the ones that stick out to me the most for the wii i actually did not play the wii or the wii u all that much those were just kind of i was definitely um looking up to playing the wii but when the wii was out that's that during a time when i finally got out of high school and simply simply had uh you know different things going on so i can't really say anything when it comes to the wii i can't even remember any of the games that came out for the wii besides skyward sword and i didn't get to play that till like five six plus years later after its release so don't have anything in particular when it comes to the wii i think for the wii the warrior wear game was released or one of the WarriorWare games. It's one of those games where I'm pretty sure the GameCube also had it. But anyways, it's just uh, it's a warrior game where you just play a boatload of mini games and you just you know go through the entire world of playing a, a ton of different little mini games. You just have to run around um, clearing them. Pretty cool. Pretty sure that was for the Wii. But if not, I mean I'll be showing examples 
as we go. If not, I don't really have anything. So for the Wii U, again, I I got the Wii U a few years after its release. So the only games that I can possibly mention is obviously Super Mario Maker, since that's one of my main games that I do on Twitch. Definitely have the most hours on there. Um, besides that, um, Color Splash, I was definitely looking up forward to Color Splash, but at this point I'm just talking about the games that I played versus games that I was actually super excited for. Um, so I would just say Super Mario Maker for obvious reasons. For the Switch, do I have any favorite games for the Switch? I would say not. I was definitely the most hyped for uh, Dragon Quest XI. That game was obviously amazing. I put in over 100 hours into the game, so you know. Yeah, I mean, it's also an RPG, so in an RPG, you usually shove that much time into the one of those games anyways. So, as of right now, Dragon Quest XI. Uh, but other than that, it's obviously going to be Super Mario Maker 2. But uh, at the release of this video, obviously that game is still not out. So, hopefully that gave you some insights of uh, the games that I enjoyed growing up, I guess you can say. Um... A question from Jayloos, which is uh, one definitely one of my longest longest time viewer, I guess you can say. Um, he actually ended up catching me uh, playing uh, Banjo Tui for the N sixty four, and uh, he ended up missing out on my Banjo Kazooie playthrough, but. Either way, he, he's been watching me for over a year now. Uh, he asks, what is your least favorite game that you have actively speedran? I would easily say my least actively game that I speedran was definitely Return to Subcon. So this is a Super Mario uh, Brothers 2 ROM hack made by GlitchCat7. Um, as a casual playthrough of Return to Subcon, it is definitely very fun. Um, it obviously it's going to be frustrating, mainly because it's sort of like Kaizo-esque, where you have to do these tight inputs, or, or tight playthrough, um, play the game where some of the things are just going to be really tight. I guess you can say, I don't know what I'm trying to say anymore, but basically the game is hard. It is fun to do, again, as a casual, but when it comes to a speed run, the game just demands way too much. Um, I actually had to stop playing this game as a speed run because my controller was no longer working since I was using an emulator. It wasn't working for this particular game where you had to hold down, hold right, uh, hold the uh, hold or run button, and jump at the same time. And due to that, my controller just wasn't able to actually press all the inputs, mainly because of how much how long I'm, how long I've been using them to for speed running. That I just couldn't do it, and therefore I had to just stop playing the game in general not only that but knowing the fact that you can get a really good time and not being able to do it because either the game is dropping inputs or the controller is dropping inputs it's like i don't know man as much fun as i have speed running i just could not do that game anymore I i'm hoping that i do that offline but due to the fact that I have so many things going on right now, I just have not even been able to play that game whatsoever. So, yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of ton of tough tricks, mainly because they're all like damn near close to frame um, frame perfect or whatever. Where if if you're just off by even one pixel or two you're pretty much gone but i don't really know any of that special lingo so let's move it on um 
this question comes from Papa Doom. So cool story about Papa Dooms is I actually ended up playing one of his glitched levels in Super Mario Maker where um, if you're underneath a note block and then something from above presses that note block where Mario is outstanding, he'll actually get pushed to the left or the right, I believe. And if he goes towards the direction of where a cannon is also located, uh, a bullet bill cannon, um, he'll actually be shoved into the bullet bill cannon and then shoot straight up when you jump. And um, according to him, I'm not sure if he got a warning from Nintendo because of that level or or if he just ended up deleting the level himself, but point is, he had to end up getting rid of the level and it was kind of funny and he ended up popping into the stream and um, I, he had told me that he was Papa from, from that level that I had played because he actually ended up seeing it in one of my YouTube videos. It was kind of hilarious, but his first question says, how did you become interested in speedrunning? So what's funny about this is the fact that I I was definitely one of those skeptics where I was watching people do speedruns and one of my first questions to myself was how do these guys or gals or you know how do these people that end up doing speedruns enjoy speedrunning if all they're doing is either resetting or or just raging over the game right so i'm asking myself this question like how and um one day i don't know what it is i was doing but i was definitely playing mario maker and i just decided hey what if i do for two days if i just randomly do speed runs and my very first game that i ended up um doing uh, legitimate speedruns on my stream was for a game for the NES called The Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's definitely one of my, not I wouldn't say favorite games, but just in general, one of the games that I played as a kid. And I decided to just do speedruns of this game and just have fun, right? So at first, uh, I was interested in speedrunning just because I thought it was really, like, I was definitely, again, I was one of those skeptics, but I was definitely interested in the fact that people would do speedruns and try and get their times lower. And uh, I figured I would just do it for fun. Like... At this point, I was just doing it for fun. It didn't really matter if I had uh, any time for that fact. Like, I was just doing it for the funsies. And I don't know who it was, but someone asked, what's, what's the world record for this game? And I had no idea who it was. So I ended up looking at it because at that time, I was getting uh, 46 minutes of an entire playthrough and the the time had ended up being the time was 26 minutes and 43 seconds by smart bomb and i was like damn i was getting 46 minutes uh completion right as a speed running first time and the time ended up being 26 43 and here i am asking myself how how is this run 26 minutes long when I was struggling to be under 50 minutes? And um, obviously with some time and effort watching his run, figuring out how he was going faster without doing anything special when it comes to just, you know, going from point A and point B because the game is just, you go from uh, the level, you begin on the left side and you just go to the right side or wherever the exit is. And um, just figuring out what he was doing uh, that ended up helping me get my time really low was um, definitely super fun. Um, what ended up making me want to either find new tactics to beat the game even quicker or just in general what kept me wanting to continue to run that game because I actually ended up pushing the game to 
what is current world record of at least one year is 26 minutes and one second. So when I, again, when I first began running this game, the game was, the game was 2643. And going from that to a 2601, like, granted, this is just a regular platformer where you cannot run. So you just walk at the speed that the game lets you. And being able to bring down 40 seconds is quite a lot because some of the tactics that ended up coming out of this game were pretty ridiculous where you would end up saving um, some rotations when it comes to catching ropes or uh, doing some uh, pretty weird jumps that would get you past gaps a little bit faster or uh, damage boosts in order to get through sections even quicker it was pretty cool. Um, I ended up finding a couple of strats that ended up saving, you know, one second here and there. It's kind of amazing. I don't particularly remember which ones in general, but as when it comes to Birthday Blowout, this game can actually go below 26 minutes. And I'm sure if it's not going to be Smartball, it's definitely going to be someone that's been most likely running the game um, before I even started, or just anyone in general. Uh, the only thing that ended up costing me the fact that it wasn't under 26 minutes was taking damage on one of the bosses that I usually didn't take damage from. Uh, and the other part that sucks about this game is it has RNG elements to it where if you grab 10 carrots and you beat a level, you'll have to play a bonus round. And that bonus round... <clears throat> that bonus round can actually cost some time so what you want is for the bingo because that's pretty much what it is is to not hit any of the carrots that would actually end up landing into a one-up so you there's a chance that you can get um one life um let's say two lives five lives and then if you hit all of the numbers correct you actually end up gaining 50 lives and um you just don't want any lives. So throughout the entire game, I believe you have to do at least three bonus games uh, and possibly a fourth, or if I'm mistaking, it's somewhere between three to five. And if any of those hit a, a one-up, you're obviously wasting time. So it, it was most likely accumulation of one, of one of the bonus rounds or just the bonus rounds in general that ended up getting me... Um, one-ups that cost me some time plus the fact that um that i got one life somewhere that ended up costing some more time but that's pretty much how i got interested into the game into speedrunning was just doing it for fun someone asking what the world record was finding out what that world record was and then shooting for that and then obviously for now coming out on top so the next question Papa Dooms asks is, what was the first game you speedran? So my very first game that I did speedruns of, I actually ended up only doing two runs of a game called Air Fortress. So I ended up doing two runs of a game called Air Fortress. I believe it was Quest 1 and 2. Not 100% positive. I did that before Mario Maker was even a thing. So I actually ended up completing one run and then starting a second one, ending, ending up and dying in spots where I didn't naturally die in, getting frustrated and then just quitting the game. Uh, the, one of the main reasons why I chose this game as my first one is just because I thought it was pretty cool. Like, Air Fortress is basically a game where it goes from an auto-scroller, you're in a ship and you have to um, destroy enemies as they come flying towards your face, insta-killed if they touch you, and then when you finally get to the end, you finally get to the fortress, and the dude gets off of his ship, you go inside the fortress in order to blow it up, and that entire section is is basically just a platformer without actually having to jump on platforms it's more of um 
It's more of a, just a game where, you know, you go in there and you have to go find the core of the fortress. And then when you blow it up, you have to get out of the fortress because if it blows up while you're still in there, you have to do it from the start. And actually during this section, you can take as much damage as you want because you can get healed as well from enemies that end up dropping health or bombs and you get out and then you start all over again. I think there's eight fortresses total, um, quest one only and quest one and two. So basically you can beat the game once and leave that off and, and you're done, or you can beat the game twice. So it's kind of like Legend of Zelda one for the NES where you have to beat it once and then you'll actually quote unquote get the true ending when you beat it the second time. And obviously the second time comes around, it's harder. So that was my very first game that I did speedruns of and ended up stopping because I wasn't, I didn't have anyone to chat with. So whenever I got frustrated, I saw no one talking and, you know, not being able to answer any questions in general and therefore just getting even more frustrated and then just dropping the game entirely. And what's cool about it is I came back to the game um, after I've already started speedrunning uh, Birthday Blowout and whatever other game I was speedrunning at that time and ended up getting first place for both Quest 1 only and Quest 1 and 2. Um, the only reason you can say is, the un is why this wouldn't be as impressive as you would think just because I have world record in both categories is because no one runs the game, so there is no competition. So technically speaking, it wouldn't be that hard to get a world record in a game that no one really runs but yeah so there's that he also asked what is the hardest game i have done speedruns of and as of right now if you i don't necessarily want to count return of subcon as the hardest game i've done speedruns of so I'm actually just going to choose a different game and say Bart vs. the Space Mutants. So there was this game called The Simpsons Bart vs. the Space Mutants also for the NES. That um, the reason why it was so hard to do speedruns of this game is because uh, at the time when I started speedrunning the game, um, I did a casual playthrough that took me over five hours to beat. And then when I finally did my very first speed run of, um, I ended up putting down that time from uh, over five hours to, I can't remember what it was. I wanna say it was under 40 minutes. That in itself was pretty impressive. The reason why it's pretty impressive is because Bart versus the Space Mutants, uh, in case you don't know, is a platformer. Um, you play as Bart, you have to run around uh, collecting the goals because some mutants come into the town of Springfield and they're trying to get energy for the machine in order to destroy Springfield or the world and uh, you have to stop them by picking up the goals that they that the mutants themselves want and the very first level Springfield is really easy um, no problems there getting to the second level though the shopping mall that level is beyond hard mainly because of the lollipops that move around um, they go clockwise or counterclockwise and it's extremely difficult um, that would be the reason why um, the third level the circus is actually pretty easy it's not that bad besides the blowpipes the fourth level, that's where everything uh, ranks up to 10. It goes from, uh, you know, pretty mediocre level one, um, level one difficulty for the first level. The second level, the shopping mall, that one actually goes up to like a seven because of some of the type of platforming that you're forced to do. Uh, level three is again, uh, level one difficulty because it's not that hard it's just mainly going from the left all the way to the right side the boss is super easy pretty much the boss for every single level is super easy it's just trying to get to them is sometimes a little bit difficult 
When it comes to the fourth level, that one actually shoots up to 10 because not only is that level super long, which is the, the museum, not only is it super long, but some of the platforms that you need to land on are super small. They move rather fast. And my gosh, you just have no idea um, just how difficult this game can actually get. And uh, when I first picked up the game, the world record was at 16 minutes and 38 seconds with third place at 19 minutes and one second. So you can only imagine um, how far first and second place were. I mean, he was pretty much three minutes ahead or two minutes and a half ahead of second place. And I actually came in, I found some new strats and ended up bringing down the time from 16 minutes 38 to 15 minutes and 55 seconds. Um, mainly due to some of the strats that I found that actually ended up saving a little bit over 10 seconds. Um, currently now, um, they have managed, people have managed to, um, to find a skip that could possibly save time. I honestly don't know how much time it could save. I want to say somewhere between five to eight seconds, but I honestly don't know. And, um, just being able to figure out how, what was the fastest way in level five, which is the nuclear plant to pick up all the power rods, which you have to collect 16 power rods and then go basically talk to Maggie, which has the last 16th power rod and um, be able to get through that entire section as fast as you possibly could. What were the chances of both Marge and Maggie appearing in the location that you wanted? and saving a ton of time there just by being able to figure out um, that in general was pretty amazing. Again, um, Bart versus the Space Mutants, very difficult. Um, that, that run can be lowered over 15 seconds now, mainly because I ended up dying in my world record run and being able to find the one skip that I just couldn't think of. So I wouldn't be surprised if it could go even lower than that. But uh, definitely the hardest would be Bart versus Space Mutants. Um, he also asked which one would be my easiest or most annoying. Okay, so... The most... Probably the easiest speedrun that I've done thus far was a game called Shadowgate, also for the NES. So in case you haven't picked up, I mainly like running NES games probably just because of the nostalgia, as people like to say. I don't know, they just, they're a lot simpler. You don't really need to remember all that much. And I'm, as, as I'm finding out, I mainly like platforming. So, you know, just jumping, killing, and getting to the boss fighting them, killing the boss as fast as possible to get to the next section. I just find that fun. I don't really necessarily enjoy uh, puzzle games or anything like that. So although I have ran puzzle sort of games like Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle, where you just have to run around collecting carrots, figuring out what the fastest uh, way to do that, um, don't really necessarily go there uh, very often. But again, it would be Shadowgate um, for the NES. Uh, and that's just because it's a point-and-click game, so all you really have to do is remember what it is you need to click and then get there. That's pretty much it. The most annoying speedrun that I've actually had to learn was a game, again, called uh, The Simpsons Bart's Nightmare for the Super Nintendo. The reason why this one would be annoying is mainly because of all of the RNG that basically every level has in the game. So, uh, for anyone that does not know, this is a game for the Super Nintendo where you're pretty much playing, uh, you're trying to find eight pages in order to beat the game. That's all you have to do. So the eight pages, you get them by playing mini games. You play the mini games, you win, you get the page, yada, yada, yada. So the reason why this one was the most annoying is because it has eight mini games. All eight mini games pretty much have RNG, but a large majority of them, let's say five of the eight, 
have RNG that you can basically manipulate or, you know, figure out that doesn't make it RNG anymore. But there are, let's say, three games that do in fact have RNG. So basically the reason why this one would be the most annoying to learn when it comes to speedrun is because if you want to go fast, you just have to hope that that RNG goes into your favor. If it doesn't, dead run. <laughs> you have to start from the beginning. The run is less than 17 minutes long in case you did not know, but those 17 minutes can be extremely annoying. Um, there is one one mini game RNG where you climb up as Bartzilla and and uh, enemies from windows come down throwing things at you and you just have to hope that those aren't in front of you and there's also um, a Marge wasp that flies back and forth you just have to hope that the enemies from the windows don't hit you with anything and you have to hope that Marge as a wasp which is a massive hitbox including yourself um, also with a massive hitbox don't end up hitting you because if you get hit you fall down and you have to climb back up and it's just one again one giant ball of RNG and the other one that I can recall is when you play as as um, as Bart wearing the purple costume I can't remember uh, Bartman I want to say is what they call him I, I, I honestly can't remember so you play as Bartman where you're flying and you have to shoot and kill a bunch of mini bosses with your slingshot and the RNG when it comes to that is how fast can you kill the bosses how are they going to move and um, just trying to get to the end without dying because if you die in that mini game you still have uh, you have five lives and obviously every time you die you waste time because you're no longer moving the auto scroller and if you're not moving the auto scroller or hitting the bosses you're just wasting time so um, that would be my most annoying game it would also be I guess you can say a really proud moment for me to get world record because of the amount of RNG that the game has so there's that uh, this question comes from Thelonious, and he asks, uh, again, backstory with Thelonious is he ended up showing up in my speedrun, not my speedrunning, my uh, Super Mario Maker runs. He gave me one level that it had vines everywhere. According to him, he was using the vines as, um, as a decoration, but because of how bad the D-pad is on the gamepad, I was accidentally climbing the vine and his level was also an auto scroller that would move right really fast and because of those vines it actually ended up causing me not be able to beat the level but <laughs> it's kind of funny but anyways he asked what's one of the harder texts you had to master in order to save a decent amount of time during a run so in order to be able to answer this question um, I would also have to answer that with Bart versus the Space Mutants, and the reason why is because there were two texts in general that I found. I can't really remember in which level. I, I no, it was yeah, two texts in one level. So there's two texts that you can do in the museum. So there is one section where you can jump to the third alligator without having to wait. You just have to have momentum to push you forward. That would end up saving like three and a half seconds or four seconds. And then there was another section right after that where you can skip having to wait for one of the platforms to appear from underneath you so you get to a section where you end up defeating the plant mini boss and there is one section where it's the floor that's lighting up after two seconds the next platform lights up and you jump on that and then you jump on the next one and you just keep doing that until you get to the very end so there is one section right after the alligators that you can skip one of the color platforms 
by again using momentum jumping on basically on the last pixel that you can possibly stand on the platform before you fall in order to get to the next area and because of how fast you're going and for anyone that does not know in bart versus the space mutants bart actually controls like ice physics the entire time so if i if you were to just jump and then stop you'll actually slide into the next hole that you're faced with so what you have to do is because of how fast you're going you need to jump as soon as you touch the ground in order to get to the next platform which is actually a very big platform you won't end up failing that unless if you're just not paying attention that uh, that in itself would also save three and a half to four seconds so those two tricks alone which is the fourth level in the game and the hardest level in general that could actually end up saving up to eight seconds alone was extremely difficult i don't want to say they're pixel perfect done jumps um tricks in order to get those jumps but in general they're so hard that basically you don't have time to think it's once bart touches the ground and once you start speeding up you just have to do the inputs if you don't you're gonna die and if you do then you can still die <laughs> because if you jump too early you're gonna die if you jump too late you're just gonna fall and then die so i would have to say it's those two um that's what ended up saving so much time i don't think i ended up doing them in my world record run i could be wrong but you would have to actually end up watching that run so you can see for yourself and uh, not only that but i've also done in depths of the games not necessarily when it comes to speed running but just in general that can actually show you what that game can offer you when it comes to it being a nintendo game and it show uh having so much to it but yeah it would definitely be those two jumps from the fourth level in bart versus the space mutants they i don't know how long it took for me to figure out but just in general they were definitely extremely difficult to learn and do <laughs> in such a short game he also asked have you discovered any major time saves in any of the games that i've done in speedrunning um I don't want to necessarily say that I found uh, any major skips. Obviously, when it comes to an NES, saving 8 seconds to me is a ton of time. But just to derail it from just Bart vs. the Space Mutants, I also did another run called Chinese Super Mario World. So basically, Chinese Super Mario World is not the name of the game. The name of the game is Super Mario World for the NES. But this is a Chinese bootleg of the actual of the uh, actual game that it's also called Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo, um, you know, made in China, hence the name. And the reason why I mention this game is because there is a castle. I believe it's Castle Six. It's the one right before the Last World. I have not run this game in over a year, so I can't remember. So basically, just to give you a tiny input of what this game is about, it's basically a recreation of the Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo, but made for the NES instead. And the people that made it did not do a good job when it comes to physics. They did a great job when it came to portraying what could be done for the NES at that time. Uh, the only part that they failed was the fact that the physics are just beyond horrible. Like, for instance, um, Mario controls kind of like Bart in ice physics, but worse. Um, you can instantly get a uh, P-Speed uh, standing still just by switching power-ups. So you don't have to go anywhere. If you continuously switch power-ups, you instantly turn into whatever it is you switch to so if you have a feather on a fire flower you just continuously uh press that i think it's like two times and you'll instantly get p speed and then boosh you start flying when you start flying uh i can't remember how to stay in the air 
I don't think it's just pressing back. It might be like pressing up on the D-pad and you, you know, you start flying. It, everything about this game is so janky. When it comes to fighting bosses, you can sometimes go right through them and they deal damage. And um, just in general, quick retrospect of uh, the game. Uh, there is the one castle right before the last world uh, where you can use a cape to fly through the entire um, second half of the castle. And the second half of the castle is, I don't remember the name of the castle, but basically it's the one that has thwomps that fall down with thwimps, you know, going up and down. But in this game, there are no thwimps, there's only thwomps. So you can actually use a cape to fly through that entire section without ever stopping. And before, uh, before I came into this game, the world record for this game was 31 minutes and 28 seconds by another Twitch streamer called Author Blues. And I was looking at that time and I'm like, hell no, I'm not gonna be able to get that time. That time is just way too low. And uh, actually bringing down the time from 31, 28 to 29 minutes and 42 seconds by me. So basically a two minute uh, time save. I'm pretty sure even in my world record run, I ended up dying and losing a lot of time, uh, most likely over 20 seconds. But anyways, uh, I want to say it was in my world record run, I didn't do the cape uh, strat that I figured out because you need two capes in order to be able to do it. And uh, I didn't have one. So I had to do it the slow way. I don't remember how much time it saved, but again, in an NES game, you, if you pretty much save five seconds, that's already going way faster than you would expect because this being a platformer where you, you start in point A and you go to point B and you can end up saving five seconds in between those two locations, even though it is an NES, it's like, eh, <laughs> it's quite a lot of time to be honest. But he also asked, what game have you speed ran the longest? So the easy question, the easy answer for this question would be Bart versus the Space Mutants. That's just how much I love this game, right? So the reason why this game is the longest one that I've actually done speedruns of is because in case you weren't you didn't realize uh, Bart vs. the Space Mutants was actually released 10 different times. It was released for the NES. It was released for the Amiga, the Amstrad CPC, Atari ST, Commodore 64, Sega Master System, ZX Spectrum, Sega Genesis, Sega Game Gear, and the MS-DOS. That's the reason why this is the longest game I've done speedruns of is because I did a speedrun of every single version after I was done with the NES in order to see how much different these other versions look and I've actually done an in-depth of every single one in my YouTube channel it's the uh, Bart vs the Space Mutants in-depth uh, it's got its own tab for that so you can see every single difference between the original one uh, with some minor exceptions and uh, in my channel i usually only do speed runs in the weekends so friday saturday sunday with this game uh i ended up speed running this game for an entire month so what i ended up doing was doing a casual playthrough of every single version and then a speed run where I got a good enough time to just be like, oh, okay, this is good enough, move on. And at the very end, after I had done all 10 of them, I actually ended up doing a speed run of all 10 of them, but instead of one of, one of each one by themselves, all 10 at the exact same time. So in, for this game, if you end up losing all of your lives, you actually get thrown back to the beginning of the game and you have to start over. So I did a speed run with no game over. So you can only imagine how difficult that was. 
so yeah a as much as i would like to not mention this uh bart versus the space moons again um i kind of have no choice because that's just how good the game is <laughs> so moving on Another question that I probably should have answered from the start, but because I didn't have any bullet points or anything uh, ready, um, I'm going to answer this question now. From Link of Times, he asks, Why is your name Koaz Legion, and why is it spelled wrong? Well, I mean, easy answer would be, you know, it's a username. Um, I purposely chose Koaz Legion because I didn't want to spell it as Chaos Legion. But the true answer would be, I misspelled Chaos Legion. <laughs> so, back uh, back then, uh, I first, you know, I first heard of a game called RuneScape that was for, you know, just basically the internet, where you would go to the RuneScape website, you'd be able to play the game, and, uh, you know, you go on your merry way. So... I guess you can say that the one bad thing that gamers have is trying to figure out what they want to name themselves. So I was sitting there and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play this game, this is gonna be awesome. Uh, my brother Link of Times, he's like, hey man, make an account, uh, we can play together, yada yada yada. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then it says username, and I'm like, Link of Times, what is, what's a username? He's like, oh, it's just like... An alias is just a name that you want to name yourself in order to be able to play the game but just don't let it be your real name because reasons and I'm like okay whatever so I'm like there I'm just sitting and I'm asking myself well, what what can possibly be my username I, I don't want it to be something stupid and uh, I didn't want it to be something simple either and I remember a day prior that, uh, for the PlayStation 2, I saw a game called Chaos Agent, and I'm like, hey, that sounds pretty badass. I want to name myself Chaos Agent, but, um, obviously, I'm born in Mexico. That's where I'm currently making this video, so English is my second language, and I'm only, I'm sitting there, like, at 14, 15 years old, trying to figure out how do you, how the hell do you spell Chaos Agent? chaos I, I knew how to spell legion i just had no idea how to spell chaos i'm like i want my name i want myself to be named chaos legion but i had no idea how to spell the name and i'm like okay Th me being as stupid as i am or global i don't know what the correct word would be i could have easily have put chaos legion in the explorer and be like oh it's spelled this way but i didn't think of that i was just sitting there for a probably 15 minutes trying to figure out how to spell the word chaos and i'm like is it a o or is it o a i had no idea so i'm like whatever i'm not going to be sitting here for the next half hour trying to figure out how to spell the word chaos so i just spelled it with o a thinking that's how it was spelled and lo and behold that's not how you spell it but i mean it just makes my name that much more interesting the reason why i'm called uh, Koaz Legion Kedu on Twitch is because I had already previously made an, a, a Twitch account with the name of Koaz Legion on a different PC and I didn't want to transfer that over to what I currently have now so I'm like whatever I'm just gonna make a brand new account and just put Kedu. Kedu being a uh, frog's name from Chrono Trigger was one of the um uh, heroes that you can use in the game if you so do wish to and uh, Instead of saying cause Legion frog because I thought that was stupid or cause Legion Aaron because Aaron is uh, Frog's uh, human name because at this point he got turned from a human to a frog hence frog and Then I'm like, okay, so what's his name in Japanese? And then it turns out it was Kairu and I'm like, hey, that sounds pretty cool I'm gonna name myself that so there you go. <laughs> sure, I, I've mentioned this story uh, plenty of times, but now you have heard it for the very first time on the YouTube. Um, again, we are reaching our last 
a few questions so if i have any more inputs into anything that i wish to say it would probably be now but anyways we're gonna move on with papa dooms he asks uh what makes you decide which game you want to speed run so what actually makes me decide what game i want to speed run is when i casually play the game for the first time so for instance, um, when I first played uh, Barbie Explorer for the PlayStation 1, I got it as an incentive from another viewer that, you know, uh, tipped me some money or donated some money, if that makes more sense. And uh, that was from Foxy Mimitron. So basically on my Twitch channel, if you give me uh, $10 for whatever reason, you can easy, you can challenge me to do anything. So basically, it, it the way I think about it is, it, these are things that I either don't want to do or just don't know about them. I guess you can say so. Uh, so he gave me ten dollars and he's like, I want you to play this game. And I'm like, okay. So I was looking it up and I'm like, so this is a Tomb Raider game but with Barbie in it. And when I started playing the game, it actually ended up being a Tomb Raider meets Crash Bandicoot Barbie game. And I was like, hey, this looks pretty interesting. I should speedrun this game sometime if I have the time. So at that time when he gave me the game, I was still speedrunning Return to Subcon. And I'm like, if I have the time, I'll come back to it and do speedruns of that. And obviously, lo and behold, I finally found the time started speedrunning it just for the hell of it and i thought it was very fun and then before that i was playing voodoo vince remastered uh it's a game that i found by accident from my brother and this game is also a platformer so i was like hey this looks pretty cool I, it would be pretty fun if i end up doing speedruns one day so again that day eventually came and uh long story short what makes me uh what makes me choose what game i want to speed run is is just that if i find if i find the game that i'm currently playing which is most likely a platformer because that's mainly what i'm what i'm interested in um fun you know or something that i was watching other people do also look fun i you know give a shot at it the way i explain it is if i choose to play a game and it turns out to be fun i'm gonna do speed runs of it and if the speed runs are not fun i'm just gonna stop i'm just gonna get a good enough time and then move on because with barbie explorer i did 100 percent, and the 100 percent category there were no times for it so i'm like i'll be the first one bam did one run never went back to it nor would i ever because 100 percent is pretty ridiculous and um yeah it's just do i find this game fun yeah if i don't find it fun when it comes to speed running i just stop and if i find it more fun to not really take it all that serious i also do that because when i'm currently speed running voodoo vins i'm just doing it just for the fun i'm not really trying my hardest to get a long time like i would normally but that's what makes me decide it's just do i think the game looks fun does the game when you start playing it actually is fun and uh you go from there <laughs> that's pretty much it um he also has like the decision process what why do you decide to run this or that game uh again it's probably answered in the very first question uh why do i decide to run it I mean why not right <laughs> no real reason as to why or why i don't it's just if it looks fun i do it again from what i've seen uh from what it looks like as well when it comes to platforming i enjoy the most if it comes to anything else i'm mainly eh, not really like the, those don't really interest me i just enjoy platforming i guess you can say just because i mainly stick with nes games that doesn't mean i won't go somewhere else because voodoo vince is a 3d platformer so far different from a 2d um 
he asks, do you take into account the popularity of said game? No. <laughs> I never take into account the popularity of any game. Um, when it comes to NES, again, um, not that many games are all that popular. So, I don't necessarily choose um, the most obscure game that I could do speedruns and then get a low time for. It's just the fact that the game that I happen to choose, people don't really run. And then uh, easy example would be a game called Ghoul School for the NES, where the only category at the time when I was running that game was any percent. And the any percent game was under five minutes. And when I was doing uh, just regular attempts, um, the game was under 20 minutes. And I'm like, how in the world is this game under 5 And I'm if I'm doing it under 20? And it just turns out there's a boatload of glitches that basically let you get to the very end of the game super quickly. You kill the boss, you're done, it's game over. And I'm like, yeah, I was speedrunning this game because I, I enjoyed it. Figuring out that the any percent actually sucked, dropping that entirely, making my own categories, and speedrunning those instead. So even though I don't take I don't take into account of popularity of said game, if I end up not wanting to do the only or the categories that they have in those said games, I make my own because if there's more to the game that you can do to it when it comes to just in general playthrough then why not do it because for instance um again in ghoul school there was only any percent but why is there no any percent glitchless and if there would be any percent glitchless why is there no 100 percent why is there no 100 percent glitchless it's like you can do all these other categories why not also go for those and my suggestion would be, if they don't exist, why don't you make them exist? It's that simple. <laughs> if you're, like, I enjoy playing games. And the any percent was skipping the entire thing. So I made my own categories. I made the any percent glitchless, so you can't use any glitches. Any glitches. And I made the 100% and 100% glitches. So it's like, I'm going to... Do the game with no glitches, but beating it as fast as possible. Uh, play the game, picking everything up with and without glitches. And it's like, man, it, because basically all of those categories, they're all under 15 minutes or so. So I had more fun doing 15 minutes of each run than I did playing five minutes of just one. It's like, not very fun. Again, make your own thing. If it, if it makes it so you have more fun with the game, even though the current um, categories don't particularly enjoy, you don't enjoy playing, then make your own and have a blast doing your own thing, regardless if anyone knows that you got a world record for it or not. When it comes to speedrunning, if you're not going to have fun speedrunning, what's the point? His other question is, how many runners have tried? So I'm assuming he's asking... Um, if whatever said game I had played, how many runners for that said game actually ended up existing. So, when it comes to Ghoul School Any Percent, there was actually, when I first started doing the run, there was like over 20 runners, maybe under 30. That was the highest number of runners of a game that I did speedruns of. So, pretty popular, but when it comes to, if, like, let's say any current game, um, less than 30 runners is pretty much a dead game, which is perfectly fine. Um, but other than that, it would just be that. Probably less than 30 runners for Ghoul School and any any other game that I have done speedruns of have always been below 10. And it's people that just haven't done runs of for obvious reasons. Maybe they just came for the game for a little while and then just stop but yeah it, again i don't really care about popularity like for instance if i were to one day choose a game that a lot of people are running like for instance 
I do have plans of speedrunning The Messenger, which is currently a PC game. It was also released for the Switch, and I don't know where else. I want to say that's a pretty popular speedrun game to do of. I'm planning on doing speedruns of it one day. I don't know when, but one day. And again, I don't really care about popularity. Whenever I do speedruns, I don't necessarily do it for world record attempts i just do it for the fun and if i can see that i do have a shot for a world record kind of like return to subcon where i just never got world record then i just don't worry about it but unlike return to subcon i know i can get world record and just wasn't able to but hopefully that answered the question Oh, he also asked whether the world record can be broken. Well, there you go. Like, Return to Subcon, I definitely had a shot of getting world record and just never got it because of my controller just basically not letting me get it. Um, but, again, whenever I do a speedrun of any game, I don't necessarily shoot for world record. What I always tell people is choose whatever game you think would be fun um doing speedruns of that said game and just doing speedruns of it not necessarily looking at what did the person do to get uh, such a low time what kind of strats they're shooting for that's making them go so low it's more of a pick said game do runs of said game once you feel comfortable of doing runs of said game, then you go to the leaderboard and be like, okay, what's my time? Uh, uh, Bugs Bunny's birthday blah, for example. I'm under one hour. Okay, what's the world record? 26 minutes. Crap, how are they getting 26 minutes if I'm getting under one hour and I feel pretty damn good about it? And it's like, okay, check out the people that have way lower times than you or the top person that has low, uh, lower time than you hence world record and be like okay this is what they're doing oh i had no idea you could do this okay let me do that and then you know practice makes perfect uh never shoot for world record but if you feel that you can get world record one day go for it and if you don't then don't but um with those questions we are pretty much done uh due to the fact that i don't have any bullet points of anything in general i'm just going to throw in my own opinions um the reason why i get uh, salty angry frustrated whatever special word you want to give it whenever i'm doing runs and i get annoyed of doing said run regardless of what run i'm doing is because if i know that i can get a better time and i can't get that better time regardless of how much how many attempts i'm putting into the game it gets really frustrating but just realize that the reason why i get angry is not because the game is making me angry it's just because I can't get the things that I want out of the game. Like, for instance, if I know I can get said trick and I keep failing it, it's like, why am I failing it if I know I can get it? It is very annoying, so therefore I get angry. <laughs> Same thing whenever it comes to just in general speedrunning the game. It's like... If I know, let's say my sum of best is under 18 minutes and I can barely get under 20 because I can't get one trick to work. It's like, if I, if I know I can go below 18 and I'm constantly getting 20s, it gets me angry because it's like, come on, I know I can do it, but yet I still haven't been able to push obviously um when you finally get the times that you're looking for you have no idea how um how how much rush you get from it so even though anyone or me in specific gets angry while doing any run in general 
is because of that rush. It's like, man, I'm finally on that run. Everything seems to go perfect. Granted, one or two things have gone wrong. But man, when you finally get that unexpected gold split or unexpected final split to finally pop up into your face and be like, yes, I did it. It is super, super good. Yeah, I can take one hit. I can take one hit, but don't... Don't take it. One, two, three, four, five, six! Um, people have um, described it as getting high it's like this is just natural high it, it just feels amazing like for instance uh, Bart versus the space mutants my time my world record time is 1555 but the other bad thing when it comes to speedrunning is for me the reason why I'm not happy with that 1555, even though that run is massively good and will be extremely hard to beat unless if you just shove in the time and the practice and figuring out uh, how to do things faster or better than I did, is because I ended up dying. So if you actually go to my Bart vs. the Space Mutants page, and look at my world record time comments it says death in the air pipes which is located in the circus about 10 seconds lost overall so when i was doing this run i'm like i know this game can be below 16 minutes and at that time i think my world record was either 16 minutes and one second or 16 minutes and four seconds somewhere around that line and when I was in that run, I'm like, okay, this run is gonna be like very close to below 16 minutes, but it won't be below 16 minutes because I ended up dying in the circus. And then getting the perfect RNG where Marge appeared both times, which she has, <clears throat> She has a 25% chance of showing up. Because she has four locations that she can appear. And you want her to appear in one spot both times. So that's 25% chance she'll be there. She has to show up both times. And when Maggie... Uh, when you first start and Maggie has five locations that she can be located in. So she has less then let's say 20% chance of appearing in the spot where you want her to be and she'll or she'll be in one of the other spots so I got her to appear in the spot where I would lose no time and Marge had to appear both times two different times because you appear in that same location two different times and then getting an unexpected eight second gold in a level where I already knew you couldn't really save all that much time because it's just platforming. You just go get one power rod and then you leave because there's one power rod in said room and then you just leave and go through the door or through the elevator and just go to the next location. So getting, you know, basically everything to fit in. I find at this point, I finally figured out uh, how much time I'm losing depending on where Maggie's located. What are the chances of Marge appearing? And how do I how do I get those power rods the fastest? 
Not only that, but also using death abuse to get back to the door or elevator faster and just putting it all together when both Marge and Maggie ended up cooperating. So at this point, let's say I could have saved uh, two, three seconds and then getting an eight second gold, which means I ended up saving five, six seconds on top of the two, three seconds that I already could have saved. So if you look at that run, you'll be able to tell all of the information that you would need. It would just say uh, how much time you could save in this split. And then if it appears as gold, that's how much time I ended up saving. What? Fifteen fifty five? Impossible. No way. And just being able to get everything to fit in is amazing. But again, if my time is 1555 and ended up dying in the circus that could save me 10 seconds, then that time would have easily been a 1545. And you have no clue how much I would have lost my crap to find out that the time that I got was 1545 at a time when I was barely 1610. Like, I would have lost my crap. And I lost my crap because I still got below 16 minutes, not expecting it. I'm pretty sure I even say it in, in the run. But... Getting under 16 minutes and still dying after losing 10 seconds is just unbelievable. So the reason why I get angry or why I continuously reset even though I hate resetting is because if I know I can get the time and not being able to or knowing that I can get said trick and not being able to get it or the RNG just in general not falling and every time I need it to be, which is obvious reasons, is the reason why I get, you know, salty over doing runs. Uh, just in general, why I do speedruns, it just, I just love seeing times go down. Like, for instance, um, with Bart, if the world record was 16 minutes and 38 seconds, and then as a person that has never done speedruns of this game, being, dude, this time is impossible. I'm never going to reach this. And then finally being able to beat it, it's like, hell yeah. That's how it felt with the very first world record run that I got for Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout, where I got the world record by like five seconds. Something, something minuscule. And then ending up losing it like less than two days later. It's like, damn, dude. I first started this speedrun just for the fun of it. Getting world record and losing it all within the exact same week. And then getting it back, losing it, getting it back, losing it. Like, you have no idea how much fun it was to... Um, doing a speedrun from someone that's never done speedruns before to getting a world record, immediately losing it and getting it back uh, so many times was, it just felt so good. And again, coming back to Bart, um, 16 minutes 38 and be like, there's no way I'm going to be able to get this. Finally get it and, and, and ask myself, how can this run go even lower? Figuring out how to do that and then finally executing, you have no idea how good it feels. Again, not every game is going to be like this for 
everyone or even myself but just in general knowing that a, a time that I simply can't even think of getting to finally getting it and then improving it by so much just feels so good that is the reason why I like speedrunning it's just because it, it just feels amazing to get your time lower and lower and lower and then pushing those games so far to the point where your times will I can't think of the word right now but inspire other people to push your time even lower because with me it was again smart ball and the mexican runner for bugs bunny's birthday blowout and uh bart versus the space mutants seeing those times and be like yeah i, I want to see if i can get to them because there's no way i will getting to it and then beating it and then uh you know getting praise from the same people that you thought you would never reach just again it just feels amazing uh not only that but when it comes to speedrunning in general i also love routing and finding out tricks again because this is the nes that i'm currently speaking about or just in general any other game which i don't really have experience with other than voodoo vince is being able to find a new route and an easy example for this would be a game called Lizard which is a homebrew game that came out for the NES which I was currently at that time playing it also on Steam um, game that came out I can't remember I want to say 2018 a game that came out and the reason what what got me inspired to play in this game to begin with was again smart ball was playing it and i'm like yeah this looks pretty cool it's just a platformer you run around as a lizard you can get other lizard power-ups uh there are several different power-ups but you can only have one at a time you have to beat all the bosses before you can get to the final boss and then you defeat the final boss and then you either get the good or the bad ending depending on what you did and watching smart ball do runs with um trying to get sub 19 minutes in the any percent watching him get super close to that time it's like yeah man he did it and then i'm like okay this game is pretty much dead right and what <clears throat> What I didn't like about the game was when I first started running it, it's like, hey, this looks pretty cool. And then realizing that the game to control the lizard was actually a little bit harder than expecting. I don't know why. I can't really recall what made the lizard a lot harder to control. But doing the run and be like, man, I have to go through basically basically five minutes of a bunch of platforming that also has a lot of rng when it comes to owls or dogs or enemies in general and then getting to the actual boss and then end up dying or having to reset and having to do that entire little section again was just so frustrating because i'm like man the game is so much fun if i can get past this one section everything else would be fine right and then him again getting close to sub 19 minutes and me wanting to do speed runs of this game but just not enjoying the specific route and there i am thinking is there any way to skip this and then accidentally finding out that in the PC version it doesn't actually react when it comes to save uh, saving in specific spots the same as the NES so I figured hey if these saves doesn't work on the NES then the PC version should be different 
uh, in a different category than the NES because they don't work the same even though they're supposed to be the same. And then uh, obviously the easiest way to counteract that is you just can't use the save states after turning the game off because it just it just wouldn't be fair for anyone. And it's like, okay, fine, doesn't matter. The very next day, I'm like, what if I use the bounce power up to jump over the gap of the one section that I simply did not like? So basically, the 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 current strat at that time was you have to go through this entire section down here and to get to the entire section up here where the boss was actually at and it's like if i could just skip this entire first half and just go directly to the second half that would be so much better because at that current time the current strat was having to go to two sections in order to get to the boss and me figuring out what if i can just skip this finding out that i could skip it ending up saving over 30 to 40 seconds because of that skip and then because of that skip having to reroute everything because it just no longer was feasible to just go directly to said boss and it's like okay how can i change things around to see if i can make this go faster and then here i am and then here is smartball again um thinking of ways to make things go faster and then <clears throat> going from almost or very close to sub 19 to what current world record is of 18 minutes and 38 seconds it's like wow it's like we went from very close to sub 19 time to subtracting that time by over 20 seconds because of one skip it's like damn dude i guess that would be the answer to the question that was asked previously uh from thelonious have you ever discovered any major time saves in a speed run it would be from blizzard being able to skip like 30 seconds of a, of that one run that i simply did not like that I myself was thinking of just letting go of the game because I didn't enjoy having to do having to deal with RNG and a bunch of platforming bullcrap that just destroyed the game for me. Finding the the so quote unquote skip, which is more of a just jump and then you're done. Saving 30 seconds and then on top of those 30 seconds you end up saving another 20 because of rerouting Just amazing again. I, I definitely enjoy routing just as much as I do um, speed running the game and putting the said route into action just feels so good so so if I ended up missing anything I'll answer anything whether it's on stream or or in the comments but let me know what you want to know when it comes to speedrunning or me in general like um, anything in general like how to pick your first game how to stick when it comes to speedrunning or um, you know what game to choose why to choose said game like me naturally I usually end up uh, I don't really like games that go above one hour just because they're so long to me. Currently I'm running Voodoo Vince that's over two hours, but again, because it's platforming, I don't really care that it's two hours, over two hours long, it's just the fact that I'm having fun. But I also stick to NES, and NES games aren't very long, they're not very long, and therefore they don't make you think all that much, so yeah. just anything that you can think of i i did ask my discord the entire time before this actual video was made uh for any questions in general um one quick thing why do i enjoy streaming so growing up i always i always loved playing video games obviously i grew up with the nes and then grew up playing nes super nintendo every single Nintendo console. Um, 
very little PlayStation 1, very little PlayStation 2, very little Xbox 360. And again, I enjoy playing video games. So I'm like, okay, growing up, I want to either make video games or I want to play test video games. You know, how can I do either of the two? Never got any of those two. Uh, I don't know how to code. I have done some, uh, you know, coding when it comes to literally just sitting in this chair, figuring out how to do that, uh, but not very much. And um, when it comes to playtesting video games, I obviously have never done that whatsoever. And uh, actually having a buddy of mine that he goes by KB Mo. He's one of my moderators on my channel. And he's like, uh, at that time I was playing a lot of World of Warcraft. And he's like, hey guys, you should go to my Twitch page and watch me stream World of Warcraft. And I'm like, what's Twitch? Because at that time I didn't even know what that was. I don't know how long that was, but it was quite a long time ago. And I'm like, what is that? And he's like, this is what Twitch is. People uh, watch other people play games. And I was sitting there like, why would anyone watch somebody else play a video game? Why wouldn't they just buy the video game and play it themselves? It just did not make sense. So anyways, I was watching him uh, streaming the raid that I was in, I'm assuming. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then that's it. I just visited his page that one time and never went back to Twitch. And then I went back to Twitch probably over a year later. And I'm like, maybe I should stream one day. I don't remember what made me think that, but I was like, I should stream one day. So I did. And the reason why I didn't really want to do it was because I knew that one, my internet wouldn't be able to handle it, and two, um, like I wouldn't really know what to stream. So I was like, I I'll do it, doesn't matter. Uh, I'll just go for it. And then uh, ending up streaming, and I was like, hey, this is pretty fun. Since I was still playing World of Warcraft, I didn't have a schedule. So I was like, I'll stream whatever it is I want. I feel like streaming at that time. It was uh, roguelike games when I'm not doing World of Warcraft. And then when I am doing World of Warcraft, I just won't stream at all. And then um, finding out that basically I would only stream for like three, four days if I'm lucky. And that's it. And it's like, it, it's pretty fun. But... I don't really have time to stream. Again, I don't really remember what made me, um, in general, stream more, but I ended up streaming more. Uh, and then a game called The Binding of Isaac uh, Rebirth was released and did uh, a ton of hours streaming that game. And then when I first heard of Mario Maker, I was like, hell yeah, I want to stream that game. And then being afraid that I would actually get burnt out of streaming just one game, that I really didn't want to stream it. I just kind of wanted to play it. Ended up streaming it anyways. And uh, up until now, still continuing to do that so you can only imagine how Mario Maker 2 is gonna make me feel <laughs> but yeah like what got me streaming was the fact that KB just like hey check this out a year later ending up doing it anyways because when I first started to realize uh oh yeah it's like people can watch other people play games and if I don't necessarily enjoy the game if I were to enjoy the game like I would uh, at first started watching a lot of Minecraft streamers it's like hey they can do some pretty cool things and 
and uh, me not necessarily enjoying to play the game myself, and then branching out from Mar uh, from Minecraft to speedrunning to just casual games in general, it's like, that's what brought me to Twitch. That's what brought me to streaming to begin with. Um, I don't know how long I've been streaming for. Like, I want to say I've been streaming since 2016. But what brings me to streaming is just the fact that it's super fun. It, it just brings me back to video games. Like, if I can't make video games and if I can't play test video games, then I can certainly play video games. And I kind of, quote unquote, uh, play test levels in Mario Maker when people give them to me and I'm just like It could be better if it just didn't have this or if it had a little bit more emphasis in what the player wants me to do I you know if you want to count that as play testing like you should because in Mario Maker basically anyone can make any level and if I suggest them if you can make it by doing if by removing this in general it's like it would be that much better and uh always saying hey if you're gonna change it make sure to give it back to me and i can tell you what i think about it otherwise you know the level's good or the level's bad or whatever that, that that's just really cool like obviously one day is to become a partner streamer and make it more official but as of right now everything is just hobby and I do it every day because I, I enjoy it there are times when I think about just not streaming that day but if I don't stream that day I'm just gonna be playing video games anyways so I might as well stream it won't it wouldn't necessarily be you know Mario Maker but I would still be playing games and it's like if I'm just gonna be playing games anyways I might as well just stream so it's actually been a long time where I haven't had n no streaming day unless if it was like technical difficulties or one day uh, right before GDQ uh, my my computer just pooped on me and just wouldn't work so I had to order a new power supply or something in order for it to work and then it's like, hey, I can finally start streaming again. I don't know how long that's been, but that's what brings me to streaming. Just enjoying playing video games. Uh, loving the fact that I can talk to others. Mainly because no one around here speaks English, so I feel more comfortable speaking English instead of Spanish. And uh, just, you know, hearing their thoughts on what it is I think about said game. Because... As much as I love Super Mario Maker, I also love <clears throat> I also love doing uh, just regular playthroughs. So, yeah, I think we have reached the ending. I don't have anything else to say. I really hope that we got the point across from the start. Not really sure if it did, but um, I don't really have. Um, I don't really have any set idea of how I wanted this stream to be besides answering the question why do I stream which is technically at the very end and why do I enjoy speedrunning so again hopefully I've answered those questions if not I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments below you can also find me at all times on Discord other than the times when I sleep. I'll post a link of that. You can find me on Twitter, which is basically the spot where you can find me from time to time, but not really. Or on my Twitch page, which I'll also give a link of that. So you can hear my thoughts on anything else that I actually end up doing or going to do. Hope everyone is hyped for the Super Mario Maker 2, which is coming out a month earlier than I was expecting because I thought it was gonna come out a month later. So there's that. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope to see you in the next video. And with that,
peace out.